What's up, metalheads? Welcome to the Scrap Metal Podcast, the show for the misfits who've been listening to the same music since high school. I'm your host, John Von Frankenstein, and joining me today is my metal thrashing mad co-host, Chris. Chris, I gotta ask you, man, how you feeling? I gotta say, I feel like I'm I'm losing some of my fandom or, or some of my faith right now. Oh, oh no. What the hell could you possibly be losing your faith in? <laughs> is it Star Wars? Is it the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Is it the NFL? <laughs> and does this have anything to do with how you're keeping your heavy metal street cred? I'm going to pretend it has something to do with my metal street cred. <laughs> Because it is, I don't know if I've brought it up at all, but I am, unfortunately, a New York Jets fan. And (laughs) they have made me disgusted by the sport of football this year. And yes, Aaron Rodgers getting hurt on the fourth play. Like, yes, the the season went to shit immediately. (laughs) So it's not like it's... It's not like they just put a shitty team out there. After that, they probably should have put a better team out there, but that's a different (laughs) discussion. But yeah, I've just been disgusted by football as a whole, thanks to the (laughs) atrocious play of the New York Jets, and also the nonstop fucking coverage of Taylor Swift at Chiefs games. Fucking sick of it. I can't take it anymore. When is the next Taylor Swift game anyway? (laughs) i get it a lot of people are like you know i watched the sport to watch the sport i don't care that this celebrity is going to be there just because she's dating someone on the team like i i i guess i can understand how it would be an annoyance but it's just it's very funny to me as someone who (laughs) Has no dog in this fight. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> just watching everyone get furious. It is funny, but as someone who loves football and like, oh my God, it was <laughs> because the start of the NFL's fucking obsession with Taylor Swift was right around the time when the Jets faced the Chiefs early in the season. Yeah. And I'm yeah. telling you, the fucking refs handed that game to the Chiefs because (laughs) Taylor Swift was there. The Jets should have won that fucking game. They started making up penalties because, you know, the Chiefs can't fucking lose because Taylor Swift is there. They need to ride the coattails of Taylor Swift, who's making fucking billions of dollars fucking going on tour, (laughs) and then making a movie of the tour, and making a shitload of money off of the movie of the tour, and the people who already spent a shitload of money to see her live are now seeing the movie... Oh, boy. <laughs> Just so everyone knows that this isn't a bit like Chris isn't trying to play like someone who hates Taylor Swift just for the fucking views that we're going to get and all that. This is almost verbatim the text that I got the night that the Jets lost to the Chiefs. Bro, fucking the fucking NFL's, genuine. the NFL's official Instagram profile. After that atrocious game was changed to Chiefs are two and zero as Swifties. Tell me that doesn't make it feel like it's fucking rigged, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like what the fuck? Wasn't it like? Wasn't it like NFL Taylor's version or something like that? Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> fuck that. No one gives a but fuck. Wasn't the whole? Wasn't the whole argument like? I I saw some people saying that like this is exactly what the NFL wanted because they wanted to get more engagement from women this year. And it was like, it just fucking fell in their laps. And they were like, oh my God, yes. our, our prayers have been answered. There was some sort of higher power watching out for the NFL that said, you know what? We bless upon the Tay-Tay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's funny because like in times like these where someone's favorite team is doing atrociously respectfully Chris um, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people turn to their faith and people will put on their lucky socks or you know don the same fucking hat or jersey to make sure that everything is ritualistically as it should be to appease a higher power that is going to make their team win and it, it's the power that faith has in people's lives and what better showing of faith in the NFL than the classic halftime show 
gifted to us, the masses, <laughs> when Creed performed at Chris, what was it? What 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 Super Bowl was this? What was this? I'm not Who sure. Who was if, playing? I don't think it was even a Super Bowl. I think it was just a Dallas Cowboys Thanksgiving game, which Oh, is that what it was? It's because the Dallas Cowboys, it's so fucking funny and kind of <laughs> racist. But for every year, uh-huh. the Cowboys face the Redskins on Thanksgiving. And it's like, come on, dude. <laughs> Is that the thing? So it's it feels like it because it's the Redskins have changed their name. They're the Commanders. But yeah, this year, yeah. the Cowboys face the Commanders and fucking Dolly Parton comes out and performs at halftime. And I believe that is what Creed performed at like 20 some odd years ago. It was a because he's wearing a Cowboys jersey and the Cowboys haven't been in the Super okay. Bowl since, you know, uh, before the uh, the the before times. Um, <laughs> so it was the year 2000. Yeah, BC. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So before yeah, it's, Creed, it was the year two thousand before yeah. Creed. <laughs> but but yeah, I'm so it, happy. It was a uh, it ha- it was definitely a Cowboys game because Scott Stapp was there in his Dallas Cowboys jersey, um, and I assume they're facing the Redskins because that seems to be what they do every Thanksgiving. Dude, that is the greatest fucking halftime show. I have I'm so glad that Creed has been making their way back into people's hearts and that people have finally dropped the fucking charade that was the yeah. Creed hate. Like even myself, I'm like, you know, you know what? Fucking Hire is a great fucking song. It's really <laughs> fucking catchy. And that's exactly what we're going to be discussing today. Christian metal bands and Christian rock bands. Those bands that maybe got a bit of a bad rap. Was it because they were Christian rock or Christian metal? Or was it the way that they were trying to put their message out there? Chris, are you excited to get a little bit more in touch with your deeper faith in this episode? (laughs) I am excited to have this discussion of of Christian rock or Christian metal. Because what's interesting is that some of the bands that we're going to talk about, similar to goth bands, insist <laughs> that they are not Christian rock or Christian metal. Um, right. It's, uh, you know, you look at the the content of their lyrics and the, the members of these bands will admit, yes, my Catholic or Christian faith is helps me in every way of my life, including when I'm writing lyrics or when I'm writing music, but that doesn't make the music intrinsic, intrinsically Christian or Catholic music. So it's, right. it's interesting, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to talk about this. And like you're saying, uh, I'm someone who 20 years ago was a huge fan of Creed yeah. and yeah. I would listen to the albums, human clay and weathered and, you know, I loved so many songs. Mark Tremonti is a phenomenal guitar player. Yeah, um, yeah, it really is. <laughs> you know, and it's I was even guilty of you know making fun of Creed for a while there, even after I, I became a fan of them. And it's yeah, it's interesting how, and we were discussing it before we even recorded how it's almost like everyone is like, you know what? Yeah, we like Creed, and we're not gonna <laughs> pretend that we don't. You know, we're just gonna. You know, we're not going to pretend, we're not going to be like, oh, I'm too cool to listen to that. It's like, no, it's it's actually not terrible music, and we're yeah. all going to fucking listen to it. Yeah, it's it's so funny because you bring up the fact that, like, back when Creed first came out, the music was good. I was younger, and I was like, okay, I really like this music. But when people started to kind of steamroll them with, like oh, they're a Christian band. They're really fucking lame. Like, you listen to Creed? Like, I mean, I can't get on the same boat with Nickelback. I... (laughs) (laughs) Like, How You Remind Me and Hero are probably, like, the two songs that I can get with. But uh, as far as Creed goes, I, I fucking... I was a big fan until people started making fun of me for liking Creed. Yeah. You know, until it became uncool to like Creed. And I think the message that was put out there at the time was that people were turning against the band because they were a Christian rock band and that 
that's the reason that they were um, falling out of favor with their fans. And I don't necessarily think that that's the case. A lot of the bands that we're going to talk about, like you said, will make it clear that like, yes, okay, you know, our faith may be a major part of our lives, but we're not necessarily trying to push it on other people. And like some of the the songs that we're going to discuss, it wasn't until way later on that I was like, oh shit, this is talking <laughs> about Jesus. Like I, I had no fucking clue because I wasn't looking for those messages in, in the music. So I think it really has a lot to do with how the music gets packaged and how the message is put out there. And at times, like with someone like Scott Stapp, the personality of that lead singer yeah. is what turns people off. So, I mean, let's just dive right into it, right? Creed, one of the fucking greatest halftime shows ever <laughs> fucking gifted to us. Have you seen all the people that have been dressing up like fucking cosplaying Scott Stapp? Oh, yeah. Like, what the fuck is going on? It's, <laughs> it's all I've seen for like weeks now. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, like I said, Dolly Parton plays this halftime show and, and all people are talking about is Dolly Parton. And then they're talking about and reminiscing about Creed and Scott yeah. Stapp in his fucking Cowboys jersey. The and fucking people, bald dude doing the acrobatics. Yeah. And like people <laughs> buying Cowboys jerseys with Scott yeah. Stapp's name on it. Yeah. So that they can dress like <laughs> Scott Stapp. And it's like, this is completely insane. Dude, it's fucking, we are such a culture built on memes that it's it's brought about the resurrection of fucking Creed. Like, I remember, I remember when they announced that they were going on, like, this uh, cruise ship tour. Scott Stapp walks into the room and he's like... <laughs> It's, it's a fucking Instagram reel. He walks into a fucking rehearsal space where the rest of the band is. He goes, hello, my friends. We meet again. It's been a while. Where do we begin? <laughs> and I'm like, no. Is he really doing this? So, like, it's it's just, it's so funny to see them fucking back and enjoying this kind of, you know, yeah. return to, to the spotlight. And I, I really do think that it was... Scott Stapp is what turned people off to Creed because although the rest of the band, you know, they, they went on to form Alter Bridge with, with Miles Kennedy, who, uh, you know, famous for performing with Slash as well, yep. but they didn't necessarily seem like they were pushing a Christian message out there, but Scott Stapp felt like he was being sort of preachy. Maybe not always through the lyrics, but I think in the way he presented himself, and I think there was a bit of arrogance there that people didn't like. I think there was a bit of, especially in the early days, him kind of sitting on a high horse and just thinking of himself in this real grand way that people were turned off to. And so it was easier for the music media to spin it as like, oh, you know, they're losing popularity because they are a band with Christian values or yeah. a Christian message. And like, that's such bullshit way to diminish what people do with music right yeah i mean i think that the two of us you with your slayer hat with 666 <laughs> on it and me constantly fucking repping the horns and shit like whatever someone's personal faith is can be left out of it like if the music is good the music is good but i i really think that scott stapp was the downfall of Creed and not so much whatever Christian message they may or may not have been putting out there. Yeah, definitely. You know, cause I remember listening to Creed and it's like, Oh yeah, they're a religious band because their name Creed is such a, it <laughs> yeah, has such yeah. a religious connotation and Scott Stapp being an outwardly religious person, but that's just the one member. Unfortunately, it's the lead singer. Yeah. <laughs> but it's only the one member who's like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, use my faith to inspire the lyrics. And it's not like the lyrics are super religious. Knowing right. they're written by someone who has such a, a devout faith, you can see the religious connotations. Yeah. But, you know, when I was a kid and I wasn't looking for that, I was just in love with Mark Tremonti's guitar tone. Yeah. I didn't care if it was, you know kind of sort of religious or not yeah you know and i and i think that's why 
I can be okay with listening to Creed, even if he's like, yeah, it's, I'm writing these lyrics because I'm Catholic or Christian or whatever it is. I don't know if he's fucking Protestant or some shit, but <laughs> like, I can listen to that and be like, okay, yeah, that's great. Good for you. And at the same time, I can listen to a band like Twin Temple talking about like yeah. Lucifer, yeah, yeah, yeah. my love. And I'm like, yeah. I don't worship Lucifer either. That doesn't make the song a bad right. song. <laughs> You know, right. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. so it's, it's separating the art from the artist, but in a more wholesome way, not in like a Varg Vickerness <laughs> kind of way where yeah. you need to, you know, ignore the horrible things he's done in real life to appreciate the music. This is yeah. more of just like, okay, yeah, I get it. These folks are super religious good for them apparently yeah. all the lyrics are about god and jesus whatever they're not yeah. specifically saying praise god praise jesus in the songs so right and the music is good so fuck yeah. it i'm listening to it even a song like higher right it's now listening to it and knowing the history of the band and knowing where scott stapp stands it's very clearly about you know the afterlife and yeah. this you know, like this, this, this heaven, this idea of heaven and being, you know, ascending into heaven through your faith. And I think you can listen to the song in that way, or you can listen to it in, in the way that I was listening to it of just like the experience of someone just finding something that makes them feel alive, something that yeah. makes them feel whole or, you know, just gives them a sense of elation which I think is is fine. I think that it's cool. I think that it's cool to have that sort of message in there. It wasn't until, you know, other people started like ganging up and being like, no, this band is fucking lame. Don't listen yeah. to it. And I was like, OK, no problem. <laughs> and then just like I went I went on and I found, you know, heavier bands and I found bands in, in completely different genres and, you know, extreme metal and fucking satanic metal and, yeah, Twin Temple, yeah. satanic doo-wop and shit like that, where I'm like, yeah. this is fucking great. But at the end of the day, it's because I love the fucking music. I'm not just going, like, believe me, I've heard plenty of fucking really shitty fucking metal from bands who are like, yeah, we worship fucking Satan. And it's like, this kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not because they worship Satan, it's because the music sucks. But... It's just, it's so funny to me that it took me so long to realize like, oh, this person was writing from the perspective of their faith. And, you know, even even songs like fucking With Arms Wide Open has a little bit of references to it. What's what's the name of the song? Uh, Hold me now, I'm six feet from the <laughs> edge and I'm the can. Like that song's a yeah. fucking banger i think we were like in the outtakes episode and like one of the outtakes episodes you and i are fucking singing that shit when we found the the video for bullets yes <laughs> yes and it's just like it's good fucking tunes and another band that i want to bring up and i'm glad you brought it up before we started recording too is pod when i first heard alive by pod it gave me that same sort of sense of like, oh, this is just someone talking about like they have met someone that makes them feel alive. They have met someone that makes them feel understood and as though they matter. And so now now that I have found you like, you know, no one can convince me otherwise. I'm almost looking at it as like a like a romantic song, like a love song, yeah. like a ballad, as opposed to it being something written from a perspective of deep, profound faith. And so that's why, like, even with P.O.D., I think that's really the only song that they have that is can be seen as overtly religious. But the thing is, it's like none of these bands sound like like youth pastors, like no. that sort of religious music. You know what I mean? Were you a big P.O.D. fan in the way that you were a Creed fan back in the day? Not to the same extent as Creed. I liked some songs. Mm -hmm. I liked Alive. Mm -hmm. I liked Boom. I remember liking the song Sleeping Awake from the Matrix Reloaded yeah, soundtrack. Yeah. You know, I didn't Youth listen. of the Nation. Youth of the Nation was a popular song. Great fucking song. You know? So I wasn't as big of a P.O.D. fan as I was right. a Creed fan. Yeah. But um, yeah, I remember. And I feel like with P.O.D. for me, it was later that I realized, oh, this is like about like his Christian faith. Right. Yeah. Like it's at the time I didn't recognize it. Yeah. And then once I hear that and I go back and I listen to a song like alive and you're like, 
all right, I get it. And, yeah. <laughs> and so it's because even I, I listened to a live again recently. And the first few lines are something like, like being thankful for another day or something like that. Yeah. And I'm like, I see you in every breath I take. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, how did I not know? Like, right. right. Yeah. How was this not obvious to me? Yeah, I think it's in the same way that Tipper Gore was looking for some kinky fucking messages from her heavy metal. Um, <laughs> I think yep. that we weren't looking for those messages there. So those lyrics didn't resonate with us in that way. And I think for a lot of people, it was this is just a really cool band. This is just a really cool song. And it's it's a it's a good fucking riff. That's yeah. a really solid song. But even in the chorus, it never felt like he was like Sonny was saying to us, hey, convert. Hey, no, you're you know, you are uh, damned to eternal fucking flame if you don't follow the same religion that I yeah. follow, that, that I that I hold, you know, where like I think that's the fear of like when people label something Christian metal or Christian rock, Christian music is they're afraid of it being very, very preachy. Yeah. And I think the music that comes off very preachy is just like for someone who's not looking for that is immediately going to turn them off. Yeah. Like there is contemporary Christian rock, right? Which, like, when I hear it, I'm like, yeah, no, this this is this is very clearly being written from a preachy standpoint, and it just doesn't jive with me. I don't I don't enjoy it because I can't connect with the themes as opposed to it being like, I'm really fucking happy to be alive. You make me yeah. feel fucking alive now that I've found you. Uh, you know, can you take me higher? Like, can you take me to this next level of fucking experience and life? As opposed to that, it's like turn your fucking hymnals to this page and yeah. join along with us in this fucking bop and it's like no those are two very very fucking different things another band that i saw people mentioning this with constantly constantly and this was like very recently because i i believe they had a reunion with their original singer was flyleaf which yep. to me i never thought flyleaf was a christian band and again i saw like tiktok after tiktok of people being like oh she's not singing about a lover she's singing about christ yeah. <laughs> like you know um i forget the fucking name of the song but it, again it's that same sort of experience with uh pod and and with creed where you're like how did i not fucking get this you know yeah i mean for me i never listened to flyleaf until right. uh, about two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing your so, research. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting just reading about the band and reading the history about the band. It's, I think what's different about a band like Flyleaf is that, you know, like we said with Creed, Scott Stapp was the one that was driving the faith right, aspect right, right, right. of the band. You know, even with P.O.D., you know, Sonny's mother was a devout Christian who unfortunately was diagnosed with leukemia, and he was inspired by her devout faith to also become a Christian. And so I right. don't know about the rest of the band, but I know at the very least, Sonny was very much inspired and driven by his faith. And so that yeah. was, again, the lead singer is is driving that. With Fly I'd say the rest of the band was as well. If they're all in group photos, the band photos like this. <laughs> the, the hands clasped together in prayer <laughs> and i mean it's you know the the name payable on death which yeah. is what pod stands for it's it's a reference to jesus paying our debts when he died on the cross allegedly yeah but with flyleaf every member of the band based on what i read isn't openly christian and and openly talks about their faith and right. so Right. Flyleaf is almost like Creed, but everyone is Scott Stapp. Maybe not personality wise, but everyone <laughs> is is driven by their faith the way Scott Stapp is. And the the point I'm trying to make is like that, being John Malkovich, but they're all yeah. <laughs> being Scott Stapp. <laughs> Scott Stapp, Scott Stapp, Scott Stapp, Scott Stapp, Scott Stapp. <laughs> but you know, when members of Flyleaf are asked, oh, are you a Christian metal band? Are you a Christian rock band? It's like, we're not a Christian rock band. 
were a rock band made up exclusively of Christians. Right, and our yeah. Christian faith is a big part of what we want to sing about and what kind of music we want to make, but they're not preaching like you're saying some other Christian music does. Right, it's it's right. when you read the lyrics and you see the, the content of the songs, it becomes very apparent when you know that it's being written from the perspective of someone who is very religious and is a devout Christian. But yeah, yeah. they're not outright quoting the Bible. They're not outright yeah. referencing God or Jesus. They're just singing about the positive impact their faith has on their life. Right. And you mentioned something off air that I think is puts it into like it is the best explanation for it where you felt that like as an individual if that is what's enriching you, if that's what gives you enrichment then that's that's phenomenal. It's when people start to push it outwardly where it's like okay now this feels a little a little preachy like just back the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's I have a lot of problems with organized religion that I'm not mm -hmm. going to get into. <laughs> but that's on a a a large scale. I have witnessed how on a very small scale, on an individual scale, the positive impact religion can have on a person. I had right. a coworker who was very honest with me that he used to be addicted to drugs and he used to live a very dangerous and wild lifestyle. And then he found his Christian faith and it turned his life around. Right. And yes, it was weird to see him kneel and do the sign of the cross before starting up his machine at work. <laughs> but, you know, the dude was living... A healthier life, you know, as he turned his life around, wasn't doing drugs anymore. He was yeah. working out. He was working on his health. He he wanted to be a better person physically and emotionally. And so it was great to see that his faith had that effect on his life. And so right. like, I, like you mentioned, like, and like I said, I can see the merits of religion on an individual level. It's once you have more people and it becomes the organization, that's mm -hmm. where I have a problem. Right, right. <laughs> and I think that's, I think that is a very, I think that's a statement that holds true for a lot of people. Like, you know, if I wanted to, I could still be the same edgy fucking teenage fucking punk kid. Just be like, fuck you and your fucking religion. And like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, but no, I've, I've fucking, I've matured just because I may not connect with something that, so, that someone else does, doesn't, you know, in the same way where we're like, hey, don't gatekeep music. It's like, don't gatekeep someone else's personal experience. Yeah. But it, it, it but you can say like, I don't like these aspects of the greater organization quotes trademark yes uh you know at the end and at the end of the day i think that that's like i said we're with like for me with a straight up christian music where i can't connect with it because it feels like it is just pushing the message as opposed to being an expression of someone's life experience written from the perspective of someone who has a deep and profound faith. And like when it comes to bands that again were sort of like it was a surprise and I think it was really just one or or a few members as I lay dying was one where I remember like even one of their music videos, I believe it was for the song Through the Darkest Night. It was like the scene of Mary and Joseph like trying to find <laughs> shelter. So it was like two people on the horse and like the shroud and everything and carrying the child and all that. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, that's what this is about. Like it wasn't until I saw the fucking music video. And for those who don't know, the, the <laughs> singer of As I Lay Dying found himself in a bit of hot water. Just uh, a bit. That, that I think, uh, you know, not even not even his faith. Um, w was was gonna help him fucking escape the hands of the law on that one, you know when you when you put out a hit on your wife, yeah. Um, 
that's usually something that's frowned upon, no well, matter what religion you subscribe to. <laughs> that's what's interesting. Again, As I Lay Dying, not a band that I ever really listened to. But well, it's metalcore. We know we re- know that you hate metalcore. Yeah. <laughs> Reading about the lead singer and this whole thing, like it's he was religious and then started questioning his religion, like right. divorced his wife, yeah. citing his lack of faith anymore. Then decides he's gonna try and fucking put a hit out on her. Yeah, and like I think now after he's been tried and put in a guilty plea and like did parole or whatever the fuck like mm-hmm. he's all of a sudden like yeah i'm religious again my my faith yeah. is returned yeah and it's like what <laughs> <laughs> like like you 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 have this faith and then like because apparently i was reading that like he starts saying that like the band was full of atheists now and that they were faking it the whole time and other members came out and were like, you're full of shit. He's not speaking for the whole band. By the way, yeah. he also tried to kill his wife. You know, like it's. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a weird. It, it was a really weird thing because when As Ailey Dying first came out, I was like, cool, this is really good. Like, this is really good mid 2000s metal core. I like the chugga chugga riffs. I like the, uh, you know the fringe hair breakdowns and then it was like okay i remember hearing through the darkest night and seeing the music video and i was like oh okay there's like some religious religious undertones and then the whole thing about tim came out and it's like holy shit like what the fuck happened to this guy yeah and then it's that like i don't know if i want to open this fucking can of worms (laughs) but where he immediately jumped back to well no it was my faith that helped me whatever you see it a lot of times with the prison system and for some people like we said it's going to enrich enrich their lives and you know help them change for the better but it very much just felt like grasping at straws with him in my opinion and then like he very much very obviously hurt the band like i remember yeah. they came out with a single that was like you know i fucking did my time and like i'm <laughs> leading a better life now and i was like oh like all right you Killed your wife, but you gave us a sick riff. Like, <laughs> cool. And listen, I know I know he's now trying to put out, I think, the second album of uh, Austrian Death Machine, which was his Terminator-based side project, which is which the first album was really fucking cool. But I don't, it's, it's, it's very odd to me how someone can then grasp at those straws and be like, wait, no, I'm okay again. <laughs> I think that Tim from As I Lay Dying is a really good example of not only not only does the music press like to spin things and say like, oh, people are falling out of uh, love with this band because it turns out that they're Christian. But I think some artists occasionally have this kind of persecution complex as well, where it's like, oh, this is the reason that my band is no longer doing well this is the reason why we're not seeing the ticket sales while we're not seeing the album sales or the downloads or whatever like they all turn into the fucking singer from trapped pretty much (laughs) (laughs) and i what do you think do, do you think that we as fans of music are as harsh on quote unquote christian metal or christian rock as some people would say that we are maybe i i don't know if it's I don't know how much of it is the fans and how much of it is media or critics because right. Right. like we're saying with the resurgence of a band like Creed, it shows that the fan base has always been there. Yeah. And that no matter what jokes we make about Creed, at some point we all fucking loved higher, <laughs> you know? And Oh yeah. And so I think you're going to have, you know, like we've brought it up, you know, I was that edgy teen who goes from listening to Creed and then it's like, oh, wait, they're a religious band. And so I immediately pivot to Slipknot's The Heretic Anthem. Yeah. <laughs> and then exactly. I'm, intru- exactly. I'm introduced to Slayer and their yeah. album Rain and Blood with a song like Jesus Saves, which yeah. is like titled ironically. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. 
they come out with an album called God Hates Us All. Yeah. And Slayer is a great representation of like the opposite of what we're talking about. Right. Because Tom Araya is super religious. Right. And he's up there yelling, God hates us all. <laughs> and like, there's fucking upside down crosses on stage behind him. Yeah, yeah. And he like goes home and is super religious. And it's, yeah. he's, he knows because he said it in an interview, God hates us all is a phenomenal album title. Yeah. And so he knows that that's what the band is all about. It doesn't affect his faith. It's just something... Right he does but right going back to the original point you know like i said i was an edgy teen who pivoted to the satanic metal music and i've for the most part grown out of that yeah some people don't yeah and so you're gonna have those metal fans that are still like no creed sucks they've always sucked and they will suck and they're fucking shitty you know christian rock band and like if you think their music sucks, that's fine. You're wrong, but that's fine. <laughs> but, like, it has nothing to do with Scott Stapp's religion, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's the metal community and the metal fan base is 100% capable of being the reason why. But I don't think they're yeah. the entire reason. I think no, there's yeah. there's also that just, you know, media and and critics and just, you know... One person starts piling on and all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's cool to make fun of this band. And so that's what everyone does, regardless of whether or not we're fans of it. It's almost like, oh, yeah, it's it's cool to hate on Creed. And like I said, I was the edgy teen in high school who all of a sudden is like, yeah, fucking Creed sucks. Yeah. And then I realized <laughs> that real life is not like high school and that <laughs> you are able to have a more nuanced opinion on music and that one is capable of listening to a band like Creed and a band like Slayer who, when it comes to Christianity and Catholicism, are going to preach direct opposite messages of each other. Yeah, yeah. But it takes a more mature person to do that, you yeah, know? And yeah. so it's like I said, it's we're 100% capable of it, but it's not only metal and rock fans that are presenting this it's it's people as a whole and, and society as a whole you you latch onto one th one joke one thing and everyone is like yeah this is the joke we all make now and then yeah. 20 years later it's like actually these guys are still really good mark tremonti <laughs> still rocks the fuck yeah. out of these riffs we're all gonna go see creed now <laughs> i remember like when they announced that fucking uh cruise ship tour i was like do i fucking do it <laughs> do i do i overcome my fear of cruise ships and the open ocean <laughs> to be taken higher by by the likes of creed and it's like mm, I kind of, I kind of uh, contemplated it for a little while. I prayed on it, and the decision was no. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like even another band that just pops into my head now is Switchfoot. Switchfoot. I remember when We Were Meant to Live came out, and I was like, "This riff is fucking sick." Banana, banana, and I'm like, oh, this is so fucking good. And then I heard like through the grapevine, like, oh yeah, Switchfoot's a Christian band. And I was like, fuck these guys. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like with them, with with Flyleaf, with POD, with Creed, you've got these bands where it's like they became a meme. So you couldn't listen to them anymore. Yeah. Or you were going to get fucking clowned on. And now it's the memes that have brought them all back. Yeah. And like Creed literally made their way back somehow into the hearts of music fans the world over by becoming a meme. So it was the same jokes that made people shy away from them that brought their fucking... They were resurrected. <laughs> By the very same memes that took them out many, many a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> and thankfully, we removed the sacred stone. Yeah, yeah. And was, Scott Stapp was able to come free once again it was a little to bit, bring us all higher. It was a little bit longer than three days, but... <laughs> 
but yeah, it's the the stone. Was it was a, an extended weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Chris, do you have a suggestion for us this week? So my suggestion this week that I just thought of about 30 seconds before you asked me <laughs> is a song that is kind of the opposite of what we've just been talking about. It is explicitly religious. It very much tells a religious story. Uh-huh. And it is the song Creeping Death by Metallica. Oh, okay. I thought we were about to pick the same exact fucking song. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping for it. I was hoping for it. This, but yeah. Yeah, Fuck this yeah. song tells a story right out of the fucking Torah. It's about Passover. <laughs> This song is about Passover, and it is amazing to me that Metallica in 1984 is like, you know what would make a metal fucking song? (laughs) A song about Passover. And you know what? They were fucking right. Because a story that involves painting blood over your doorway, like it's, that's pretty fucking metal. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And then, of course, you have the phenomenal part in the middle that, is my favorite thing about the few times I've seen Metallica live is in the middle, you have the repeated chant, die, die, die. And you've got four dudes (laughs) standing in the middle of tens of thousands of people chanting die at them. (laughs) That At the tops of their fucking lungs. In any other situation, that is terrible. Like, if you're in the Roman Colosseum 2,000 years ago, and you've got tens of thousands of people yelling at the four dudes in the sand, die, die, die. Those four dudes are fucked. Yeah, they're in the fucking lion's den, and they're about to be kitty chow. But in the year of our Lord, 2023, if you are in MetLife Stadium, which has been desecrated by the atrocious play of the New York Jets, and to be honest, the New York Giants as well. To have this 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 Bring sacred land desecrated, to have Metallica there surrounded by tens of thousands of people yelling die, it's the coolest fucking thing in the world. So that's <laughs> why a good fucking suggestion. my suggestion is Creeping Death by Metallica. Thank you for that, Chris. I'm so fucking happy that's what it was. <laughs> I was really excited for us to have the same fucking suggestion, though. But um, I'm just really glad that Scott Ian got together with the guys from Metallica and told them the story <laughs> of Passover. And that he, in what some small part, gave us uh, creeping death. So my suggestion for this episode is also a band that you'll, you'll see why I thought we were about to say the same <laughs> shit. A, a band that's notorious for being super fucking preachy. So the exact fucking opposite of what I talked about this whole episode, <laughs> where they even went to the lengths of tossing Bibles out into the fucking crowd <laughs> and pegging people in the fucking face <laughs> with little Bibles. <laughs> and that is the song To Hell With The Devil by the band Striper. Yes. These guys are so fucking ridiculous. And like there, it's so it's so explicitly preachy, but I feel like it gets a pass because it's like glam metal. It's, yeah. it's fucking hair metal. It's a hair metal band for Jesus. Yeah, and that's just fucking hysterical, dude. Yeah, it is so fucking funny. And to hell with the devil is actually a cool fucking song. <laughs> it's a pretty good chorus, you know, like the fucking the, to hell with the devil it's so fucking it's so catchy (laughs) it's so catchy and like coming from any other band that would be a really cool fucking song but it it was made cringy because it was striper yep and for that same exact reason like with creed that's what makes it so fucking good so go check out the song to hell with the devil by the fucking bible tossers themselves chris (laughs) so go listen to the song to hell with the devil. What the fuck am I saying? <laughs> Go listen to fucking Striper. <laughs> Bro, and here I was sitting here like, fuck, we didn't mention Striper. <laughs> fucking throwing Bibles into the crowd. Like the way fucking, who's that DJ? Steve Aoki throwing fucking like throwing cake. cake. <laughs> 
And you got oh, these dudes man. chucking fucking Bibles into the crowd. Didn't we look up, didn't we establish that they named one of their albums after a Bible <laughs> verse? And that's where they probably got their name from because the Bible verse included the word stripes or yeah, some shit. Yeah. They're dressed like fucking religious bumblebees. <laughs> Pollinators for the Lord. That's what it is. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh boy. That's making the episode. That's <laughs> that's working its way in. I'm trying to think of a good joke for my uh allergy to pollen. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. And now brothers and sisters, if you'll turn your satanic hymnals to page 666 and join us in bidding us all farewell. As this episode comes to a close. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on the Scrap Metal Podcast. The time has come for us to pack up our gear. We'll be back to rock out with you in the next episode. Stay metal, everyone. Good night. Good night. <laughs>